Hi, my name is Thomas Tucker and I am a director of photography and welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. And uh, I'm here today, very happy to be working with Luke, my buddy, and works with me on lighting on many projects. Uh, and today we're here to talk about the light meter. Um, the light meter is something that I find uh, to be one of the most valuable tools for me as a director of photography. Uh, and it's kind of something people talk about these days. You don't see them on a lot of sets. A lot of young DPs don't own one, don't have one, never bring them out. Uh, it seems to be a lot of the older guys do. But I'm going to tell you today some of the reasons why you should consider getting yourself a light meter, learning how to use one, and uh, how it's really going to make you a better director of photography and make you really understand, I think, get a deeper understanding about what you're doing as it has to do both with your camera and with lighting. So one of the first things that a light meter can do for you is it can help you determine the honest ASA of your camera. It's hard to do this really with, without a light meter. And I'm going to give you a very brief description of how to determine the ASA of your camera. But I'm also, uh, Luke and I, we're going to post a little, a little uh, a Word document that goes through this step by step so you can see it later. Because I'm going to try to do this rather quickly. The way to do this, one way to do this anyway, is to get yourself a reference of some kind. Now. What I have here is, this looks like just a little white reflector, but this is a, a reference white. This is 90% white. It is a calibrated piece of technical equipment. The back side is 18% uh, gray. And uh, this is a product that uh, is expensive because it is something that, uh, you know, they had to manufacture uh, very precisely, made by a company called Lasto Light. I, there may be other companies that make this. This is called an Easy Balance Calibration Card. I think this is very important. You can do this with a piece of white foam core or a white piece of paper. A white piece of paper, a white piece of foam core is actually a little brighter than this. This represents 90% white and paper and a piece of or a piece of foam core is a little hotter than that probably 5% hotter you'd have to kind of check every every little uh, color of white and the and the age of the white is also going to be is going to make a little difference you get yourself your calibration uh, or you could use a white card just for the you know for ease and, and and economy put a light source onto your uh, your your card and then you want to set your camera up to the ASA that you would like to shoot at. You may have been using your camera for a while and maybe you have found that there's a particular ASA where your camera seems to operate the best. It performs the best. It is the quietest picture and it's the one that you feel comfortable with and it's also fast enough that you, you have a lot of flexibility for shooting interiors and that sort of thing. So let's say with this camera we decide that I like 400 ASA with this camera that we're shooting. I set my light meter to 400 ASA and I, I have looked up uh, in, the, in the literature to find out that when at 90% white, depending on, on how I've set up my camera, this particular camera we're using today, we are shooting standard video, Rec. 709, garden variety, sort of old-fashioned television. So we're shooting in Rec. 709. In Rec. 709, when I shoot 90% white, this, is, this should, for, to, to be at full normal exposure, on a waveform monitor, I should get up to about 100 units. That's where 90% white should, should land. So I put a light source on my card, Hopefully, I, I, I need a waveform monitor for this too. So hopefully, I have a monitor that includes a waveform monitor, or I have a separate waveform monitor. And I set my ASA to 400 ASA. I make sure that all of the NDs are out of my camera, so I'm not inhibiting the light in any way. I've got the shutter set up to 180 degree shutter. Everything should be set up normal. And then I open the iris on my camera until this white approaches 100 units of video on that waveform monitor. Now, when I, when, I, when I do that, I check my light meter to see 
if the stop on my light meter at 400 ASA matches the stop on my camera. If, and most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> most cameras lie about the published ASA that they give you on the camera. So most people say that their camera is a little faster than it actually is. So what I find is that if, if I put it at 400 ASA, I have 400 ASA on my camera and I have an F4 on my lens, but this tells me that um, I'm actually at a 2.8, so it means I have to open up the iris to 2.8. It means that actually the camera isn't, a four, is, it, that 400 ASA doesn't really mean 400 ASA on my camera, that it really is a stop slower. Now that's an extreme example, usually it isn't that great a difference, but you can adjust the ASA on your light meter, and you, most light meters when you click them up and down on the ASA scale, they change by one-thirds of a stop. And I keep changing the ASA on my light meter till it matches the f-stop on my camera. And that is the ASA, of, that's the, that is the native ASA of my camera. So I start by getting this card to be at 100 units. I look at the f-stop on my lens. I make the meter match that f-stop. And then the, the meter will tell me the ASA of the camera. So, like I said, the, uh, we're writing this out on a Word document. You can go over this on your own, but this is a very good way of trying to really establish what is the ASA of my camera. Now, why do I really care? Well, I really care because now I'm going to use this light meter as a way of guiding me through the exposure on my set that I'm, that I'm, that I'm putting up. If I set up a key light and I meter it to a 2.8, I know that that's what I want to put on my lens, and I, I should know that my camera indeed is the ASA that my meter is reading. And you can get yourself fooled by thinking that your camera is a little faster than it actually is, so it's good to do this, this um, test first. So once I've established this, we can get on to actually doing the, the, the sort of the specifics of reading the light meter, which I'll go into next. And we're going to have uh, Mary as our model come in, and we're going to talk about exactly how to read uh, the, the light meter, the way to look at the different lamps with a meter. And um, that will be part two. Welcome back. And Mary is here. But before we get into taking some meter readings uh, with our subject, I want to go back just a quick second and talk about the values that we had for that white dot that I had out here. Um, these days, one of the big mysteries for young cinematographers or any cinematographer is how to expose properly for log footage. And that little reference white, 90% reflectance white, can be a key for you when you are trying to figure out how to expose in log. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to look in the literature depending on what camera you're using and I won't uh, we can put this also on on online so we, we won't, don't need a close-up of this but this every manufacturer publishes a white value for log they will tell you well not every company because they're <laughs> red for instance doesn't like to publish anything or commit to anything and say that the camera has a native ASA or that white should be a certain value. They say it's up to you to figure it out. But most other manufacturers will tell you, for instance, this chart comes from Sony and it tells me that if I choose to shoot in S-Log2, that 90% white should fall at 59% on my waveform monitor. So when I do that little uh, exercise we just did with the white dot. I shine my light on it. I get the waveform monitor to come up to 59 units. That is log white. And then I go back and I can, I can also check and see that the, that the ASA, ASA of my camera is correct. It's also a good way for you to know when you're out shooting log and let's say you're outside and you quickly just want to make sure that your log footage is about where it should be and you're viewing in log you can just set the exposure where you think it's about right, hold up that little white dot, and quickly look on a waveform monitor, or if your camera will do it, set the camera zebras to 59 units 
only so only Sony cameras zebras go down that low but if you're lucky enough to camera have a camera or if you're using false color and you can figure out what fit where 59 the color for 59 units you hold the dot up when you hit that 59 units you know that white is normal exposure and then it's up to you to decide is that what you, is that the exposure you want do you want to underexpose over a lot of people like to overexpose log a little bit then it gets into more the art and the experience of having shot say with log quite a bit so anyway this whole exercise is really valuable for exposing in log and the and once again the uh, the light meter is key